This week on Sport Fishing, we're going to be fishing offshore, left out of San Diego last night, and right now we're about 20, 30 miles off the beach and actually in U.S. waters. We'll be fishing aboard the Commander looking for tuna. You never know what to expect out here. We can get bluefin, yellowfin, maybe even a dorado or two. So stay tuned for this week's exciting episode of Sport Fishing. I'm Dan Hernandez and I live to fish. That's a nice vermilion right there. Yeah, this is what fish is like. I have been fishing along the Pacific coast my entire life. Let me bring you in in the action and share with you some great fishing tips along the way. Sardine here. 30 pound? 30 pound line? I think it's a 40. Oh, on the 40. Go right, go right. Nice Dorado. Nice Dorado. Slide right, slide right. All the way over here, Larry. Around the corner, around the corner, around the corner. There you go, right there, right there on the corner. of the day here on the commander. I have no idea what it is. First I thought it was a yellowtail, now it's sounding straight down like a bluefin. You can probably drop it in low. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Wind them straight up. Yeah. There you go. Keep whining, keep his head turned up. Corkscrew right up for you. Yahoo! This right here is a beautiful California kelp yellowtail. Alright, try that. Got him stop. Wind. Just wind, 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 wind. Keep the rod tip up. Keep your rod bent. Just wind. You got him stopped. He's coming back towards the boat now. Keep the pressure on him. So we're out here offshore and we're uh, we're looking for kelp patties and uh, breaking fish and we had, ended up finding this nice kelp over here. And the reason why kelp patties are good for finding fish, they provide shade for bait. And when you're out here offshore, the smaller bait fish attract the larger game fish. So that's kind of why we target the uh, kelps here. As you can see, they uh, provide shade for the bait and the larger game fish, like this yellowtail that he's got hooked up right here. It's a, uh, oh, another boil on there. Down swell, right on the stir, another fish. California kelp yellowtail right here. Fishing offshore. 2015. Nice and close to home.
This week in the Tackle Box, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what we're doing today. Fishing offshore, looking for tuna, dorado, yellowtail. You really don't know what to expect. And this season, there's even been wahoo out there. So when you go offshore like that, you have the choice. You can go live bait, you can use artificials. If you want to fish with a jig, you need to up your game. You got to use that heavier line. And that's what I have on here. This is a 4-0 size reel filled with 80 pound Spectre on the bottom, 50 pound mono on top. I like these narrow reels for fishing jigs. It makes it a little bit faster retrieve and it gives that jig a good motion. Works out really nice for me. Been using reels like this for decades. Sad to say, but yes, decades. They work really good. And you want a nice stern rod so when you pull on the fish, you set the hook, you wind that fish in, you have a heavy enough rod matched up with the big reel and the heavy line to bring the fish in. As far as the jigs, um, there's lots of different models of jigs. What I like is the Magic Metals for a couple reasons. They swim really good in the water, but they have welded rings. So if you pull up to a cow patty and you think maybe there's small yellowtail or small tuna there, but you get one of those 80, 90, 100 pounders, you don't have to worry about the split ring opening up and you'll be able to catch the fish. When you look for jigs for tuna fishing, yellowtail, anything like that, you wanna find a, a thin profile jig where it's really narrow like that, nice and thin. When you see a jig like this, it tells you that that jig is designed to drop down and work back really fast to the boat. When you see a jig with a belly on it, it's more of a surface jig, a slow jig. But when you're fishing yellowtail and tuna, especially tuna, you want that jig to move really fast. And that's why a thin profile jig like this works out good. And the Magic Metals, because they come with the welded rings, again, you don't have to worry about the size fish you hook, you'll be able to bring it in. You can catch a fish on bait too, and light bait works out really good when you're offshore fishing. One thing I would tell you is try to tie a knot so that your hook has a little loop in it. Your bait will look um, better in the water, more attractive to the fish. There are hooks out there on the market that have rings already attached to them. This is one of them made by Mustad. And this is what it looks like when I talk about a ringer hook. It's just a hook that has a little ring on it. So you attach your line to the ring and your hook will move freely around. Whatever way the bait wants to turn, it's going to be able to do that freely. Because of that, you're going to get more hookups and catch more fish. If you're going to fish live bait, learn how to tie a loop knot. And if you don't know how to do that, pick up some ringer hooks and you'll catch more fish. Well, let's get back on the water and show you more exciting action right here on Sport Fishing. <laughs> Now you're back over, now you're back over, back over, back over, back over. Rod up, rod up, come underneath, come underneath, come underneath. Okay, we got some tuna going. We just came up on a school of tuna, I threw a jig out and got bit. I think we got three or four going right now. All right, let me work my way to the corner, boys. My fish right there. There we go. Here's my first tuna of the season. And here's a jig at eight, magic metal jig, right up on the surface. Pretty cool. Thanks a lot, Steve. Nice job, Dan. All right, we got two more fish going right here. There's color right there. tough day but we were uh, just looking around saw a nice nice little spot of breezing and jumping tuna these yellow pin right here so we just slid out on it real quick cut the motors 
about 100 feet from the, from the school. Kind of just slid right into them. They stayed up nice and high and dry. We were able to cast a bunch of jigs into them. We were able to capture a bunch of nice grade yellowfin here. U.S. waters, close to home, right outside of Oceanside. Our skipper Steve put us on a stop. We have fish were right up on the surface and we got all these fish on that one stop. Some nice tuna, a couple of Dorado. I got a nice big bull Dorado too. And got this tuna on a jig. And what's really neat about this is we're only about 10 miles off the beach. And from San Diego in a straight line, we're about 22 miles out. This is like the closest tuna fishing I've done like forever. And that's the kind of epic year we're having this year. Normally when you come out of San Diego, you turn left and you go down Mexico 100 miles. This time we came out of San Diego, we turned right, we went 20 miles and just beautiful fish. So we got some more fish on the boat from earlier. We're gonna keep fishing till dark. We're on a day and a half trip. And what a day and a half trip allows you to do is fish from sunrise to sunset. If we were on a one day trip, we'd already be headed in right now. But because we're here for a day and a half trip, we get a lot more time on the water. And since we're so close, I mean, we're gonna get back the same day. So it's really nice. So we're gonna keep picking away. And the technique that we're using today is when we're seeing these fish on the surface, throwing the jigs. I was using a magic metal there and I got that tuna. And then once the fish settle down and they're not eating the jigs, then we start fly lining the live sardines. No sinkers, just like a 2-0 to 4 rot um, live bait mustad hook, a 94151 hook, a nice big heavy hook for these tuna is working really good. Normally I would say go with the 5-0, but today the fish are a little bit pickier, so we're fishing with a 2-0 size, size hook, that mustad hook, and we're getting some nice fish. All right, so we're gonna put the trolling rods back out. We're gonna, Skipper Steve's gonna see if he can find us at school again, and then we'll throw some baits out. All right, let's take a little break from the action here and go to the galley and show you how to cook up one of these delicious fish that we're catching today. This week in the galley, we're in Cerritos, California at Pier 76 Fish Grill. It's a brand new restaurant in this area. It's got several locations. I know you're in Long Beach too. In Long Beach, yep. This is Chris, he's the owner. He's been kind enough to uh, cook up a dish for us. He's also an angler, loves to go fishing. All right, so what are you gonna do for us today, Chris? Today, we're going to do a take on, a, on an East Coast lobster roll. Okay. It's our West Coast version style. Cerritos style. In Cerritos style, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. absolutely. So how do we get started? So, okay, to get started obviously is the lobster. We Here at the restaurant we do a lobster and a langostino. So. Can I do this with the same lobster I'm catching right here Absolutely, you can use the, you know, the local lobster. The local lobster Spiny well. lobster. Sp Spinies as well. Okay, so from here we are going to get started by, this is a wonderful brioche bun. In my opinion, it's, it's uh, the brioche buns are made with a lot of butter. So this is not a calorie free, calorie free uh, dish. And to get started, what I do is we have a little bit of lemon aioli, and this is going to help brown it, right? And that goes on the and that flat This is going to go right on the flat top. And so here we're going to use the flat top. If we don't have a flat top at home, well, you can use a pan over medium heat. You don't want the heat too low or the bread can stick or too high, the bread will burn. Here to heat up our lobster, we're going to do this low calorie style directly in a <laughs> <laughs> a tub of butter. A tub of butter. <laughs> Here we have a blue cheese and chipotle sauce. So we take some chipotle, blue cheese. Uh, you can use a blue cheese um, a dressing like, I love Bob's Big Boy. If I was going to, not here we make everything from scratch. Mm. But if I was at home and I was out and about and I didn't have the time or the wherewithal, get your favorite blue cheese dressing and blend it with a little bit of chipotle. Here we have a candied bacon to add another level, level of flavor. It's also bringing up some, it's a balance of acid and sweet. So we'll check our oh, uh, uh, <laughs> perfection, perfection. Good timing. Yeah, so this is, where we, this is where we want our bun to be. As you can see, it's just a perfect golden brown. I'm just gonna put a little bit of lemon aioli. Okay, so now we have our, our lobster's been heated up. Mm -hmm. The lobster's already been cooked before. It's already been cooked, yes, exactly. We're, we're just we're, heating it up. Yes, right, exactly. That looks delicious. Oh. We just put a little bit of the sauce, not as you can see, just a little bit just to help accent. Our candied bacon, once again, just a little bit, not to take away from the flavor of the lobster. Some of our diced tomatoes. That's 
it. Man, that looks really delicious, good. Chris. So I gotta try it out. Yes, absolutely. I don't know where to start. It looks <laughs> too good. <laughs> That sauce is delicious yeah. too. Well, that's a great dish. Yes, thank you. If you want to find out more about this location here in Cerritos, go to their website. www.pier76fishgrill.com All right, well, thanks again, man. Likewise. Let's get back on the water and show you more exciting action right here on Sportfish. Right off the bow, only took a couple seconds. There you go, doing good, doing good. What we're going to do is you want to lift up to about 10 o'clock to about right here, and then wind down. So start turning the handle before you drop the rod tip. There you go, wind down, stop there. Just lift up, nice and easy. And then watch the rod tip, watch the rod tip. Okay, it's bouncing like that. Nice and great tuna fish here. Bow. Just a belly hook sardine right on. Yeah. Deep color. Uh, what number you doing? Ground back tuna? I believe so, sir. A little belly hook sardine right off the bow. Very nice. Yeah! Nice fish. Nice job. Woo Woo! Another nice quality yellow in here. Elephant tuna here, a little better grade. There you go. U.S. waters. I just got bit on a fly line bait. We're catching some yellowfin tuna here on this spot. I got one as we slid up on a metal jig, threw out a live bait right now, and I got a dorado. Here's another fish here. Get in the corner, you got a... another dodo. We got a bunch of dorado here now. Look at that jumper, nice one. Here comes my fish right here, color. Oh, nice jump. Is it on? Me. You get a stick here? Hey, it's off the stick. There's my Dorado. Went to Baja to catch a Dorado, didn't see one. Down here in San Diego, aboard the Commander, and we got one going. He's gonna jump. He's gonna jump right there. Oh, no. There we go. There's a yeah. duck. Yeah! yeah. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Woo! Yeah. Here's the two Dorado we got right now. We got another one in the water. And Captain Steve's got us on this spot. We started off with yellowfin tuna on this spot. Now we got some Dorado, pretty nice. All right, we're gonna take a little break from the action. And when we return, I'll be giving you this week's tip of the week. Dan Hernandez! Ho! Nice job. Nice job, man, thanks. Do you know how big a yellowfin tuna can get? Is it 230 pounds, 620 pounds, or 440 pounds? That's right, a yellowfin tuna can grow up to be 440 pounds. For 
this week's tip of the week, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how we caught the fish today. When we had those fish right up on the surface, those yellowfin tuna, we saw them breaking on the surface and our skipper Steve slid the boat right on them. The way I caught my fish today, that nice tuna, was using a rod like this with a heavy jig. Not too heavy, but like a four, four and a half ounce jig. This is a magic metal. What I like about it, it's got the welded rings. So if it would have been a 100 pound tuna, I wouldn't have to worry about it. That ring's not gonna open up. What I did was just cast that right to those breaking fish, let it sink about 10 seconds, and I ground it, grind it in as fast as I could, and as darting back to the boat, I caught that fish. Now later on on that same spot, I uh, was fishing live bait, and what I went to was a rod like this with a 30 pound test line, and I used a two watt mustad hook, live bait hook. And no fluorocarbon, just straight monofilament on there. And all I did was throw out a live sardine, got it away from the boat a little bit, and that big Dorado came up and ate it. So that's this week's tip. When you're out here, you have to have both the jig rod ready and a live bait stick ready. And you want to have a variety of lines, nothing lighter than 25, and you need to have at least one rod with 40. I wouldn't be afraid to have a rod with 50. I want to thank the crew from the commander, our Captain Steve. Everybody did a great job. We had lots of fun fishing with them. And just want to remind you to keep up to everything we're doing. Follow me on Facebook, and make sure you follow me on Instagram and Twitter, too. We're always posting pictures from all these trips there. And if you want to be part of the action, go to my website, and you can always join us. All the people you see on all our episodes are just a public like you, viewers like you that enjoy watching the TV show. And you just go to the website, you can sign up there, pick a trip out, and come join us. It's a lot of fun. Well, I'm Dan Hernandez, hoping you enjoyed this week's episode of Sport Fishing, and I hope you join us again next week as we go looking for more of the best in sport fishing.